Hey guys, welcome back. This week on Nightfall Nation is Dare Week, and my dare is to act out or read a really bad fan fiction. In our group chat for the channel, I'm always the one to send recordings of myself reading bad fan fiction, so that's probably why I got this dare. Okay, so the fic that I'm going to read is on Wattpad, and it's called The Worst One Direction Fan Fiction, and it is very appropriately named. I'm going to put the link in the description in case you want to read it for yourself. There's only like nine chapters, and they're all super short, so I'm just going to read the whole thing as dramatically and awfully as possible. Come on, Chloe, I know you hate them, but their show starts in ten minutes. I hopped, walking out of my bedroom and taking a look at my best friend. She was wearing an I Love Harry Styles t-shirt, shorts, and Converse. She looked me up and down. I winced. I was so ugly. I was a perfect height and weight for my age. Plus, I had long blonde hair and shiny blue eyes with dimples on my cheeks. I was god-awful looking. You look totes adorbs, I frowned. Why the hell did she always lie to me? Oh my god, Harry Styles keeps looking at me, I screamed. As Harry jumped around close to the edge, he was so fine. I don't remember why I hated these guys in the first place. They had good, clean music, and they were hot as hell. Plus, they were funny. What was not to like? As soon as I looked back up, I noticed Niall was looking at me with his ice blue orb. I could have fainted then and there. After the concert, a big man named Paul came up to us and said, One Direction spotted you fine ladies in this crowd over, of over 200 girls and was taken with you, so come, we'll go see them. Once backstage, we were greeted with two of the lads hugging us. Hi, I'm Harry Styles, and you're the love of my life. My friend blushed before kissing him. Hello, I'm Niall, and I'm Irish. You're the love of my life, but first, do you eat a lot? I nodded, and then he smiled before kissing me. What a dream come true. When I woke up, I was in a dark room. I was on the floor. My best friend was groaning next to me. I was going to ask if she was okay and where we were, but a tall person entered the room and sat down in front of us. Who are you? Liam Payne, Niall and Harry's bandmate. What do you want with us? I'm in love with you two girls, so I've kidnapped you so that you two could learn to love me back. I'd never love you, I yelled. I love Niall. Same. You just met him. So what? Niall, help me. He's nowhere near here. I thought I made that a little bit clear. I will not kiss you. I screamed as Liam got up and stormed out of the room. He clearly was going to touch us both unless I got out of there. Chapter 3 A little after Liam left the room, a boy busted through the side of the wall. I screamed, bracing myself for the worst. Shut up, he yelled. I hushed. I'm Louie and I'm going to save you. I smiled. I now trusted him with my life. I would not forever believe anything he ever said. He walked over to me, biting my neck, and I instantly passed out. When I woke up, I was lying down on something soft, almost like a bed. I looked around, suddenly craving blood, and I saw in the corner where Louie was sitting, drinking some random teenage boy's blood. He was so innocent. Oh, you're up. Cool. Guess what? You're a vampire. I guessed. How could he? Anyway, you're mine now, so get used to me. And here, he ripped off the boy's arm and handed it to me. <laughs> How thoughtful. I heard loud footsteps echoing through the house and coming up the stairs. In walked Niall. I heard you took my girl, vampire. Louis hissed, bangs on full show. Of course I did, werewolf. I love her. Ha, she only loves me, you bloodsucker. Whatever, wet dog, she'll be mine forever and ever. Only in your dreams, Edward Cullen. I am truly offended, man. What was that? With that, Louis began sobbing uncontrollably, but Niall rushed to his side, patting his back and whispering sweet nothings in his ear until his sobbing halted and Louis pushed him away. Get out right now. Niall left and walked, and Louis walked over to me, brushing my hair out of my face before dragging me out of the house into a mansion in the middle of the woods. Your room is upstairs and the dead bodies are in the basement. Don't cross the border and you're mine. Go to sleep. I nodded, going up the stairs and going to sleep. What a rush. A vampire and a werewolf were now fighting over me. Like the spot in Twilight. Which is basically a bad thing.
I woke up, stretching out and walking downstairs to see Louie on the couch crying. Are you okay? No, I got you pregnant. <laughs> this fic can tell the future. I stood there in shock. I'm pregnant, but vampires can't get pregnant. They can. Have you ever seen Twilight? We also sparkle because fuck logic and manliness. But sparkles are cool. For a girl, whatever. I started crying. Stupid hormones. Look, I gotta take you to see somebody. His name is Harry, and he'll make sure that the baby doesn't eat you from the inside out. Okay, I smiled, interlocking my arm with his as we strolled out the door. A perfectly normal couple. True. Okay, chapter five. This is where it gets good. I have to go and alert Harry. Stay right there, and by that I mean I know you're going to move, get in trouble, and I'm going to have to save you, and whatever. I nodded. I wasn't going to leave. Louie's been gone for three minutes. I'm starting to worry. I get up and start walking. I saw a small cabin in the middle of the woods. I knocked on the door and a hot boy opened it. Hi, I'm Zane, and I'd like to adopt you and then fall in love with you, even though I'll legally be your father. Okay, that works. I'm an orphan. Cool, so am I. I'm pregnant and a vampire. I'm hot and a half-blood. What's that? I'm half werewolf, half vampire. Awesome, besties? Duh. Then we made out. But we had to stop when Louie bust through the door. He grabbed me and took me away from my true love. Ugh, he's so mean. After Louie took me away from my true love Zane, we went to the place where I guess this hairy guy lived. He sounded like he was hot. Like, really hot. I think he needs the fan or something. He could get heat stroke. Yo, bro, give me a hug, bro. <laughs> Louie and Harry hugged. Then Harry looked over to me. He grabbed my arm and bit into my wrist. I passed out from the pain. Where am I? Same place you were last, duh. How long was I out? Five seconds. Really? Yeah, what did you want me to say? Three years? Roar. Somebody is grumpy. An hour later. Louie, I'm hurting. With his super duper fast vampire speed, he ran downstairs, grabbing me up by my waist and laying me down on a bed. Harry, the baby is coming. I was in so much pain, I screamed and yelled, and then I passed out again. I woke up to the sound of baby noises and the sudden urge to suck a human's blood. You're now officially a vampire. Cool, where's my baby? Here she is. She was like three years old. Hi, even though I'm only three, I can talk fluently. My name is also Summerberry Raindrop Tomlinson. I smiled. What a perfect name. So, Applewood Carrie Rowe, I want to marry you. Oh, Louie, <laughs> then the house fell in and all that you saw now was Zane and a bunch of werewolves. Not so fast, Louie. That's my girl. I marked her. Well, dang. <laughs> We're almost done. Zane, how dare you barge into this perfect moment between me and my true love, Louie. Louie quickly ducked behind the red sofa in fear. LOL, Louie is a wimp. Come with me and live like a queen. Zane reached out his hand for me to take, and though my mind said no, my heart said yes. So I quickly leapt into Zane's powerful grasp and was taken away from Louie and my daughter, plus that really hot boy. I think his name was Harry. Anywho, I was now the one, I was now with the one I loved and longed for. The final chapter. Just kidding, there's two more. After a long and tiresome drive with my new bae, Zane, we stopped at Starbucks to refill our thirst. Even though me now being a vampire meant that I didn't need anything to eat or drink, I still went in with him. So I know this is sudden, but will you marry me? I jumped up from the table and placed a tight grip on his neck. Of course I will. I'm in love with you. Great. We can plan our wedding immediately. With that, we both ran out of the cafe and into the sunset to live happily ever after. The end. But it's not the end. Because walking down the aisle... I wiped my trickling tears. I couldn't believe that I was finally to be wed to the best person in the world. Do you know, do you, whatever the fuck your name was, take Zayn Malik to be your husband? Yes, of course. And do you, Zayn Malik, take that's her face to be your wife? Why not? You are now, first of all, beautiful vows. Second of all, wait! The wedding was abruptly stopped by my true love Niall running down towards the altar with tears in his eyes. My love, I cannot let you be wed to my enemy when I stand before you ready to take you as mine any time of the day despite your lacking sense of love. But I don't love you, Niall. 
Well, okay then, bye, bitch. And with that, Niall whisked away from me in a frenzy of rainbows and kisses. The end. So that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that very painful experience. Um, Tune in tomorrow to watch Jenna do the cinnamon challenge. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.